，学习雷锋好榜样。雷锋就是雷锋。雷锋是个好人。雷锋是一个勇于帮助他人的人。雷锋背着年迈的大娘回家。Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of Pot Side Chats, where we talk all things China. And today, I have two wonderful guests with me: Jennifer Holstein, who is a friend and colleague at China Daily. And Fred Angst, who teaches at one of the local universities here in Beijing, we extend a warm welcome and also a warm kung to you both. Thank you, Steph. And it's an excellent place to start our chat because our story today will take us up through Yaoning Province in northern China, where it is real cold. Jen, do you recognize this guy? That is Lei Feng. He、uh, is on. You see, like these cups here. There's like cups, a bunch of these with his face on them, and T-shirts and all these kind of souvenirs that you would see in stores when you go around China. Absolutely, and famously in all these photos, he has his the Lei Feng Maozi, his Lei Feng hat, and I had the wrong color. It, this is the wrong color. This is the evolution of the Lei Feng hat with the cat ears. With the cat ears. So I had no idea he was a real person until I started researching for this video. You grew up in China, so you are familiar with Lei Feng. We learn everything about Lei Feng. A very sad story how he was growing up. So the. Chinese Revolution gave his family land and made his new life, and so he was um, very um, moved by that. So he was、uh, become a very devoted socialist, and he was、um, joined the army, a truck driver, and he described、uh, his spirit. We are just like the nuts and bolts for the truck. Wherever we go, we shine. And his very meager little bit,、um, salary. He saved up and he helped everybody else that he can help with. Yeah, so that's the story I grew up with. So you just think, how did this guy become a cultural icon in China for being a truck driver who saved his money? <laughs> so I wanted to know more about how that evolved. So I did go up to Liaoning Province, where Lei Feng spent the majority of his life, and went to the Lei Feng Memorial Hall in Fushun. Lei Feng became So well known that eventually all the photos and stories about him, letters of recommendation and praise, caught the attention of Chairman Mao Zedong, who essentially immortalized him in this "Learn from Lei Feng" campaign. The 60th anniversary of that campaign is actually this year. I think it just shows like the core value of of Chinese values and what the Chinese as a nation want to promote. Mm, absolutely,、uh, and it, it reminded me this whole campaign、uh, a parallel to、uh, the Rosie the Riveter campaign in America. And we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Which was very,、uh, you know, encouraging women to get into the factories, contribute to the war effort. We learn about his diary, and he wrote a lot of diaries. And I remember a few phrases that that's pretty burning into my brain in a sense. He says that 对同志像春天一样的温暖，对工作像夏天一样的热情，对个人主义像秋风草落叶一样啊，对敌人要呃像呃冬天毫不留情。He's so dialectical. So、yeah. I mean, it's like it's not just like be nice to everybody. He's a lot of thoughts. What he learned, he writes it, and they're very vivid. People can relate to. And、uh, what I read a few excerpts from his diary, and one of the quotes he said, "Every one of us is responsible for the rise and fall of the world." And what a lovely, profound statement to remind us that we're all, as you said, you know, part of a, a community greater than ourselves. You know, we don't exist in isolation in a bubble. You know, we are all. Connected in some form or fashion, in our family unit, our community unit, our, you know, state, country, province, what have you, the world. He is someone that is very conscious of what he's doing related to what's the rest of the world. He is not a someone just says, "All right, I just want to make a living. I just want to kill my time and have a life." As far as I can tell, it's a very conscious. He lives his life on purpose. Yeah, and I think that that's especially in this day and age where people are constantly trying to find things to 
just waste their time waiting for the next day or the next thing to come around. What he accomplished in his 22 years is maybe more even than what people can accomplish for others in their entire lifetime because he lived with such an intention. Mm. I'm actually like interested in knowing what the background of Lei Feng's life was. China was a very backward and poor country and also many, many years of war. Only way to build up China, you just have to do it yourself. You have to roll up your sleep and trying to consume less and save more for building the new China. Yeah. Yeah. And all the stories that I've heard about Lei Feng, like, that's what he did. He's like, even down to his tiny things like socks, his comrades would be like, dude, buy some new socks. You got some holes in it. He's like, no, 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 I'll fix it. You know, and he'd darn himself, yeah. you know, fix up his socks. So he was um, very frugal and saved his money. He, he had a very small salary in the army. And he was able to save like more than half his income. When people need help, so he will give out. And everywhere he goes, he see he can help somebody, he will just help. Almost like the do-gooders in the West, but it's a very different type of um, orientation. You can connect to, you do a lot of community service and outreach here. So, so you are also embodying kind of the Leifeng spirit in action. Yeah, so I do do a lot of community service projects. We go on hikes to local mountains and to local sites, but we're also carrying around trash bags and picking up That's trash. That's so much, God. And by the end, we'll be, like our hands will be full of bags of trash. That's so and good. It's, it's a really good way to involve the community. And it's, it's a perfect example of how grassroots projects, while they seem small, can make a huge impact. In Liaoning province, I actually met a couple of people doing similar things. We met Mr. Li, who does a lot of community service projects, including cleaning up along the riverbanks. He actually knows a comrade of Lei Feng. It's very cool. Hey, Ai Yi, you We are in and also Mr. Shen, who was a professor and has brought his professional academic expertise to help out local mushroom and chicken farmers. Zhao 混合到鸡饲料里也就是我们和企业共同碰撞出来这么一个灵感专业特长
学习和坚守雷锋精神，就会使我们这个社会呢变得更加美好，会使更多的弱势群体或者有需要帮助的人能够得到这种爱心的热情和暖意。Uh, and one thing that I learned when I was there is that I think in large part because、uh, Lei Feng really did the most of his work in that area, Liaoning Province has the highest number of registered volunteers in China. And I, honestly, when I was talking with them, it got me thinking about the times that I solo travel through China and how amazingly kind and hospitable the Chinese people are. Those travels and the Lei Feng spirit, you know, also reminds me of this parallel in the West. We have the story of the Good Samaritan, and you know, just helping out a stranger when you know that there's a need. So I think Chinese people are extremely kind and caring. It doesn't matter who you are; they will take time out of their day to go and help you. Which is something that I think is extremely unique to China. My dad always said that there's good people everywhere, and and I think you see that really well exemplified in China. How do you see those expressions of the Lei Feng spirit playing out into like very different countries? Well, I mean, in the West you have those religious beliefs, and but quite often that is based on you do good, you can go in heaven. <laughs> There's a purpose, right? Yeah, it's tit for tat. Like <laughs>、right. you have to do something so that you can get something、right. in return. Yeah,、uh, the Leifun spirit is not about how to get in heaven, but rather knowing everything you do is about building up the new China. So that is very, very practical. Yeah, very practical, and also、uh, very down to earth. It's not about doing something huge,、uh, heroic thing, but just on everyday life. And I, I love what you said that quote from George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones: "The smallest person、uh, can cast a very long shadow." And I think we we see that with Lei Feng. You know, it was in the the small daily moments that were meaningful to other people, and he has cast a very long shadow across China in the generation. Learn from Lei Feng, become people's subconscious in a sense, because that's become normal. Obviously, you should do that. It's not like something that oh. He's doing that, you know. It just becomes so universal. And I think that's a great way to put it. That it, it just has saturated the culture at this point to where it's an unconscious. Like this is just、Normal. how you should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just how it is.、Uh, and then for people, you know, to say, "Ah,、oh, you got the lay feng spirit. This guy, you know."、Uh, yes.、Yeah, only because today so、amazing. people be like that. They say, "Oh, that's lay feng." But when people all do that, there's nothing about special anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today here on Pot Side Chats. Amazing insight, amazing discussion. We hope you enjoyed it as well, and we will see you next time. 雷锋精神吧，其实家喻户晓。从小的时候，我们就有这样的信念，从小要做好事儿，学习雷锋。在这种传承过程当中呢，雷锋精神一直都贯穿在我的视野当中。学习雷锋，好榜样，忠于革命，忠于党，爱憎分明，不忘本，立场坚定，斗志强，立场坚定，斗志强。谢谢。